Okay, so now we're ready to start working on the stud. We've got our one inch diameter and it's just about right on one inch. It's plus or minus 10,000, so it's okay to measure it with the caliper or the micrometer. But put away the caliper when you start working on the stud because the, the .435 stud is plus nothing minus two thousandths. So you want to use the micrometer. So looking at our drawing, the length of the stud is 11 sixteenths. The length of the one inch diameter is an eighth of an inch. Okay, that'd be 11 sixteenths plus two sixteenths, 13 sixteenths, or 26 thirty seconds. Well, that's how long this is right now. If I put the ruler on there, it's 26 thirty seconds. So now what I need to do, I need to make a mark over in this vicinity of where the stud will end and the one inch diameter will continue and then I'll turn this section down to the one inch diameter. Okay, so the, the stud is 11 sixteenths, which would be 22 30 seconds on my ruler. So if I put 22 30 seconds out even with the end of my part, which would be right there, okay, then I can bring my tool over. Again, be careful, don't hit the part with the tool without the part turning or you'll break the tool. Okay, so I line the 22 30 seconds line up on the end of the part and then I'm bringing the left edge of the tool over even with the left side of the ruler. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the machine and I'm going to carefully go straight in using the cross slide knob straight in with the tool. The tool has a small radius on the corner of it. So I've got to go in far, the, far enough that the left hand side of the radius cuts into the part because that's what I lined up with the ruler. Okay. You just need to be careful because most of the end of the tool will be engaged in the material also and it doesn't like that because it's a lot of contact. I went about halfway across the end. Now I've got a nice mark I can see. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and touch the tool to the surface. What I want to do is I don't want to cut it, I just want to get the tool, the tip of the tool, at the surface of the part. So I'm looking for a little ring to appear on the part. Okay. Now I'm going to move off the part. I'm going to loosen the little screw that locks the, the numeric the increment dial on, the, on here. And without turning the knob, I lined up the dial zero on my mark. So now we've got the tool at the surface of the part and the knob at zero. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it in 0 0.05. Okay? That's 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05. 50 thousandths of an inch. I've got the power feed on the machine set for A6 slide gear in. Okay? That gives us 0 0.0052 inches per revolution speed rate. And now I'm going to bring the tool over close to the part. They have gone in 50,000. This knob here, okay, to the right and up gives you cross, or sorry, longitudinal speed. To the left and down gives you cross speed. Okay, so I want to the right and up. Tool's moving toward the part. So that's what I want. I'll stop it just before it gets to my mark and feed it almost to the mark by hand, but don't go all the way to the mark. At the end, we'll go all the way and I'll show you how to square everything up. Okay? If by chance, when you engage the power feed for longitudinal feed, if the tool goes the wrong way, if it goes to the right, you move this lever right here. Okay? This would be to the right, this is to the left. I change the direction. Okay, so now I'm going to go in another 50,000. That's our depth of cut. Start the machine and engage my power feed again. So this is 0 .0052 inches per revolution feed rate, 0 .050, 50,000 depth of cut. Okay, I'll stop it just before it gets to the line again, about the same place as last time. You have to be careful because the left side of the tool is angled to give us clearance when we make facing cuts. So don't take the left side of the tool to the line every time to the outside diameter or you'll create a jig. Okay, I'm going to go in another 50,000, make another pass. So we, after 
after this task, we will have removed 150,000.15 total material from the diameter. Okay, here's another 50, so we're down to 0 0.2. Up to 0 0.2 removed. Should be about 0.8 inches in diameter. Notice that the machine, you don't hear the machine running or anything, it's totally happy with these light cuts. I should take more of it. We don't need to be in a big rush. Another 50. This should get us down to about 0.7. Now, it's not a bad idea, even if you're keeping good track, to stop and measure it. Okay, so let's see where we're at. And remember, when you put the micrometer on there, you want to delicately close it on the part, just enough that it's touching the part. Okay, we're at about 0.55. So we'll go another 50. And we'll check it again. Okay, we're at about 0.514. So now what you can do, if you just count down, okay, if I go 10, that'd be 504, 494, 484, 474. You don't want to get in a hurry, and, you know, when you're learning to do this, because you can't put it back. If you take too much off, you have to start over. better to take your time, start sneaking in on it. The closer we get, the less I'll cut. Okay, we're at about 4.48. Okay, so minus 10, 4.38. Okay, that'll put us very close to our final size. Only 10,000 removal. It's actually 5,000 steps of time. Take 10 off the diameter. And I did check the micrometer to make sure it zeroed when it's closed before I started all this. Okay, that's about 439. Okay, it's 1,000 different than what I cut, but the less you cut, the more accurate it'll be. Okay, so 439, 438, 437, 436, 435. Four marks on the dial. Each mark is 0.001 inch. So that was 4,000. Okay, so we'll make another pass. This should get us to pretty close to the high limit on the drawing, which is 0.435. You want to kind of wipe the dust off. 